Hey, Janice. Hi, Anthony. Today we're going to review a potential estate plan, a Bitcoin inheritance planning technique using a poor man's multi-sig. Um, so we're going to try to answer what are some less costly alternatives to a true or um, I guess a managed multi-sig Bitcoin inheritance plan. We talked about uh, multi-sig Bitcoin inheritance planning in episode 256 earlier. But first, so let's kind of review that. Yeah, let's talk about, um, you know, why a poor man's multi-sig. So a multi-sig setup, which is generally pretty good for inheritance. I'm, I'm becoming a fan because you have distributed okay. access, meaning there's multiple um, keys needed to you know access your funds. And that way, there's not this pressure on any one key holder to have super tight, you know, CIA, NSA level uh, security, because <laughs> if they lose their key, the attacker can't do that much because they, the attacker, the hacker, whatever, needs to have multiple key, multiple keys in order to access your, um, uh, your, your stash. So yeah, I mean, yes, you should still have pretty good, pretty good uh, security. But if you leave your twelve or twenty-four words laying around, it's not quite as risky. It's still risky, <laughs> but it's For not sure, quite sure. as risky as like anybody sees it has instant access to all your funds. Does, so does, that, make, does that make sense from your point of view? It, 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 yeah. Absolutely, it does. It's not as detrimental because now you have it across three different people, right? So you have a third and a third instead of putting your what is it? Put it your eggs all in one basket. Exactly. Yes. And, you know, theoretically, they should be geographically distributed, not you and your husband and your, your right. daughter all have keys in the all same in the drawer in the house. You know, that <laughs> right. that defeats the whole purpose. Right. But, um, safe, yeah. safe. Right. Correct. <clears throat> but so some of the drawbacks of a multi-sig, which, again, I think is generally a good uh, Bitcoin inheritance plan, is that it can get expensive. I mean, if your stash is not that big, having three to even five hardware wallets, that's several hundreds of dollars. You know, that's might not be cost justified for your the current level of your holdings. Um, also, uh, many of the good plans or the good setups are through popular services such as Unchained Capital, Casa, and now Nunchuck is, is promoting one, which uh, we'll review at a later time. Okay. Um, those are possible single points of failure. So if you have a company that is known to be the key holder, you know, the third or fifth key holder for hundreds or thousands of clients, that's a possible attack vector, meaning some, that's, a, that's a, a sweet target for a hacker, right, to get all those third or fifth keys, yeah? Right. It's a little more... Uh enticive for a hacker to hit that instead of one computer in one random house. Exactly. And, yes. And they may also, um, I think they actually recently went through a, what do they call it? Phishing email scam. So it's, yeah. it's definitely happening. Um, but again, it's only one of several keys. Uh, but there, there may also be a subject, an easy target for subpoena. So if, um, if you are going through a divorce or a child custody or you have IRS or creditor issues and they want to get to your Bitcoin, um, uh, it's probably a lot easier to figure out that a you know big company uh, wh wh where to serve papers, where to issue a subpoena, and right. you know try to get a court order getting at least one of those three keys. So they they do become a, little, a bit of a single point of failure. Yeah. Yes. All right. So what are some of the poor man options to avoid um, the expense of multiple hardware devices, as well as the risk, of, you know, potential risk. I don't think it's a big deal, but of a um, you know centralized key holder key holding company. Okay. So one, one option is a separate seed, is to separate your seed from your passphrase. So just to review, your passphrase is, if you have, if you have a, um, a wallet with uh, 12 or 24 words, you can additionally add a passphrase, which is a, the equivalent of a 13th or 25th word. Does that make sense, Janice? Uh -huh. It does. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it's not just a word. It's, it's usually a phrase. But So what, what, what that does is you've now kind of created a two of two multi-sig. You need both to access the funds. You need both the 12 or 24 words and you need the passphrase. Oh, so okay. now you can split them up. So while you're alive, it's just you and you, you have access to both. You can just transact normally. But the plan is to give, let's say, uh, the seed phrase, the 12 or 24 words to your executor, but he doesn't or she doesn't have the passphrase. The passphrase goes to the heirs or somebody else. Ah, Those two okay. parties need to combine, just like with a multi-sig, in order to have access. So during your life, neither one can do anything, but only if they combine can they actually um, manage probate or you know access the funds. Correct. Similar to multi-sig, neither has to ex exercise extreme caution or operational security. But again, don't take it too lightly. You still need to, to take care of your... You still, right, right. You still have to keep these the portion safe. That you have, yeah. Correct. Um, well, th this is can't, th some of the drawbacks of this plan is, um, you know, what if your executors or heirs are the same person, uh, which is often the case, a spouse, a child, adult child, and so forth. So then how do you split it up? 
Um, but that's the same issue with any multi-sig. Uh, also, so in that scenario, you might want to hire a professional executor as a professional key holder for, for either the passphrase or the seed. Just something to think through there. Yeah. When you were saying that, I was thinking, you know, if you give your two adult children, one has the key phrase and one has the, the passphrase, mm-hmm. uh, that seems like they could just get together, right? <laughs> yeah, there's there. also that risk that two people right. who know each other uh, might conspire during our lifetime, which we've seen yeah. a couple instances of that. So there's that yeah. risk as well. Uh, so the, the, the other option that we've thought through is to separate your clone wallet from your PIN. So a hardware device sort of you can load your wallet, meaning you load your seed phrase into a hardware device, which is a dedicated device, which is not ever directly connected to the internet. That's why it's so, you know quite secure. But in order to open or turn on that device, just like your phone, right? You, you enter a pin. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. So then what you do is uh, during your life, you have your wallet and you have your pin and you just use it as usual. No, no drawbacks or no hindrances to, to transact during your lifetime. But what you do as your plant, your Bitcoin inheritance plan is you make a clone over your wallet. You make a duplicate of it and you give that to your executor, for example, but he does not have the pin. He can't open it or operate it. So think of a, think of a, think of it as handing him a, a smartphone, but without the without pin. Without password. It, gotcha. Right? Yep. I know the smartphone is a, is not a great example, but I'm just trying to make it accessible. Yeah. It, it does make sense because that's something that you have to have a pin to get into. Otherwise it's just a yeah. brick, right? It's just right? a, it's just <laughs> a, a clock. Of, yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, so then you give the pin to the heirs or some other party to sort of split it up. Again, you're you're creating your own kind of two of two multi-sig because you need both to to do anything. Uh, and again, neither needs to ex- exercise extreme caution if the executor loses their hardware wallet. whoop de doo I mean, again, you got to be careful, but um, sure. the attacker would need to force the pin somehow. And the heir can't really do much with a, with a pin without a hardware device. Okay? Right. Right. Uh, the big, big, big together. drawback of this is that without the pin, the executor cannot you know, enter the hardware wallet and which is the point, but they cannot keep their hardware wallet up to date for firmware and other software updates. Oh, and right. you could be, I mean, depending yeah. on how much time elapses, you could be ending up with a really, really out of date device, but I guess you would address that with sort of periodic updates. Um, uh, we did talk about that before in a, in a previous episode where if it sits too long with the way, you know, the Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrency is evolving, mm-hmm. you might have, yep, you might have to do some updates. So there are, there, I mean, not, there's no perfect plan out there as, as far as I've found, but these are some alternatives for folks who are not quite at the holding level where it's cost justified to have multiple um, hardware devices for a multi-sig, but they like the notion of splitting up um, access so that for, for security and other reasons, so. That's why we talk about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I like this plan. This it it does make sense. Um, I suggest Anthony's book, um, how probate works. It definitely applies to to Bitcoin because you're going to have to do all of it, your executor's going to have to do all of this when it comes time. Perfect. So um, I'll be doing more talks on this actually in, in, to 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 groups. Uh, we will be posting those hopefully, and and from those we're, I'm getting a lot of great questions. So yes. Um, yeah. yeah, we'll have a lot of more topics coming up. Uh, keep them coming. Keep those questions coming. Thanks, Janice, as always. Thank you all for listening, and we will talk soon next time. Talk soon. Bye now.